another episode of BPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, I thought today we could talk about importing data into enterprise. Sure. Sounds well, good. A lot of times customers will um, maybe have a large group of customers that they need to add to enterprise or maybe even a large group of materials that they need to add. And um, hand entering them could be could take a lot of time. Yeah. So one option would be to import them directly into the SQL tables, mm -hmm. um, and we've done that sometimes with customers. Yep. Yeah, I get a lot of those same questions with customers, suppliers, and stuff like that, so yep. good topic, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have an example here of an Excel spreadsheet, and in this spreadsheet I have about 30 items. Now typically, if you were going to do an import, you'd probably have a lot more. I'm just uh, doing a small sample here. And you'll notice this first column here of category codes, it represents four different categories, CG1, CU1, ENV, and NCR. Now if I go into my enterprise database and inventory, you'll see that I've got my category here, CG1, ENV, NCR. You'll see there's no items uh, in ENV. There's no items showing up on the left-hand side. So there's nothing mm -hmm. in those categories. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import those 30 items into Enterprise via SQL, and then we'll see them show up under the categories. Okay, okay? perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to minimize the inventory module, and I just take a, a few minutes to look at the Excel spreadsheet. What I've done here is the first row in the Excel spreadsheet is actually the name of the field that I'm importing it into. Now you don't have to have these named exactly, but it's just a lot easier when you do the import, and you'll see in a minute why, if they're named exactly as they are in Enterprise. I don't have every field that's in the table, but I have the majority of them and I have all of the important fields that mm -hmm. are required. Now that's one key point. If you are going to do something like this, you need to understand our table a little bit. You need mm -hmm. to know what fields are important. You need to know what the formats of those fields are so right. that you know what you're importing. For example, mm -hmm. you know you can't have a description field that's too large or a material code that's too large. If the field like material code is 50 characters, if you try to Put one in that's 55, it's going to error. Yeah. So things like that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I am going to close out this spreadsheet and we're going to go into SQL Studio, uh, SQL St Server Management Studio. That's the program you'll use to import um, the spreadsheet into Enterprise. So when you get into SQL Server Management Studio, you can expand your server and your databases to get to your Enterprise database. And to get to what's called the Import Export Wizard in SQL, you would right click on the database name and you'll choose Tasks and then Import Data. And it will bring you into this wizard. So I'm just going to follow the prompts. I'm going to click on Next. And the first thing it's going to ask me is to choose a data source, which is where the data is coming from. And that is Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to choose Microsoft Excel from the list and then browse to my file. I'm going to select my file. And the first row is column name, so I'm going to leave that checked. Click on Next. And then I'm going to log in using SQL Server Authentication with my SA login and password. Click Next. And I'm going to leave the default here, copy data from one or more tables or views. Click Next. And then it's going to bring up the sheet that's in my spreadsheet. I have one called Materials. And it automatically tries to create a table of the same name. But that's not the name of the table in Enterprise. The name of the table is called Materials without the dollar sign. So I can select it. When I click on this drop down, it's going to bring me all the tables that are in my Enterprise database. And I can select the actual table. So here's the table material. And the first thing you want to do is click on the Edit Mappings. And as I said, by naming it the same name in the spreadsheet, each column name is the same as the field name. It does that mapping automatically for right. you. Okay. 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 Now, if I did misspell something, I can click in here and select the field I want it to map it to. I can also choose ignore if I want to ignore a particular field. Okay. As long as I, if I do name them exactly the same, well, this is already all populated for me. So you can see I've got all the fields. You want to just scroll through and make sure that they've all been picked properly and everything's mapped properly. Mm -hmm. I also have a choice up here that I can delete the rows in the destination table or I can append. Now typically like what I'm doing, I'm adding materials yeah. to the table, so I want to append. Right. If you were a brand new customer and maybe you had test data in there, and now you're doing your live import of all your materials, you may want to delete what's in there and mm -hmm. overwrite it with everything. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Then I can click OK here. I can even preview the data here and take a look at it, make sure it looks okay. And then I can click Next. 
click next again and next again and then finish and then it will import and it will tell me whether it's successful or not mm -hmm. now here's okay. where I may get an error yep. if I have um, a field name too long mm -hmm. if I have a duplicate right for example for materials the material code is a primary key it can't have two of the same so right. it will error yep okay okay all right um, can we take a look at the data in enterprise sure let's go take a look so I'm going to close here, minimize here, and we'll open up our inventory module. And let's go to the first one, CG1. Here are my items. I look at CU1. Here are the items I imported under that category. Here's my NCR, and here's my envelopes. Okay. Okay. So I could obviously import as little or as much data within the material itself as I wanted to within that spreadsheet. Exactly. As I said, I, I had had just certain fields, but mm -hmm. certainly if you wanted to add um, some of the user-defined fields, I didn't do that, but maybe mm -hmm. you want to import those. You can yep. add them to, to uh, your spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, very important to understand the data, mm -hmm. to know that um, we have a flag, for example, an, an active flag. You've got to set that to active. Mm -hmm. or it's going to set the material as inactive. Right. Certain things like that is important to know. And we are certainly here to help you. If you have a question on a field in our table, we can tell you mm -hmm. what it is and how it needs to be set. Okay. 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 Um, any watch outs, any things to be concerned, any reasons why this would be a bad idea to import data like um, this? Well, yeah, if you, if you import it incorrectly, you may have a problem and not be able to see it in enterprise. Like mm -hmm. um, maybe you import it under a category code that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you're not going to see it in your table. Right. Um, so SQL doesn't care, it's just going to... Right, exactly. SQL is not going to do that validation that mm -hmm. is, if you do it inside of Enterprise, Enterprise is going to validate everything. Yeah. It won't let you save it if it's uh, already in the database or if the, um, the category code is mm -hmm. there. Obviously, you can't select the category code that isn't yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that kind of uh, user-friendly front-end right. um, validation going on. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have to be careful. Um, with that said, you should always back up your database before you do the import. Yep. You should always do it on a test database before you do the import mm -hmm. um, so that you can avoid those kind of things. Sure. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Um, any other questions? I think that was good. All right. Well, That's thank you. Good. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.